It's a long process. Uh, it starts from the light. We have the idea, we have the need, because uh, there are several reasons why you need a new bike. And then we start. After spending quite some time on the Villa Triestina stand at the recent Eurobike show, the staff asked me would I like to come and visit them at their HQ here in Bassano del Grappa. And what with them releasing two pretty cool bikes this year, both the Zero SLR and the Cento 10 High, who was I to turn down an invitation like this? But their story started quite some time ago. Let's go inside and have a look. Quick trip down memory lane then. Well, Villia was actually founded way back in 1906 and actually focused on making normal everyday bikes because cycling was seen as a method of transport. Now, Villia, they stayed true to those routes up until just after the Second World War, at which point they decided to enter the road racing game and take things very seriously, including sponsoring a team that included this guy, Ferenzio Magni, an absolute legend within the sport of cycling, and here's why. Now you can be forgiven if you've never heard of Magne. The reason being, his career was largely overshadowed by two fellow Italians, Gino Bartoli and also Fausto Coppi, who were busy battling it out elsewhere. Now there's a really iconic image actually of Magne, who was riding a mountain time trial and he had an inner tube held in between his teeth and the other end was actually wrapped around the handlebars, enabling him to pull up and still be able to release some power. Now that image, iconic as it is, he's also got some results to back it up too. He won the Giro d'Italia three times, he won the Tour of Flanders three times. If that doesn't impress you, the Tour of Flanders victories were in a row, a hat trick on board this very bike. Now the bikes used by Magne and his teammates back in the late 40s and early 50s were advertised as 100% copper. True, but not strictly true. They're actually copper plated. But how? Well, the frame builder decided to chrome plate the tube set and then they put it in a bath of translucent coloured copper paint. And I'm led to believe through electrolysis that paint was actually attracted onto the frame and stayed there in place. Electrifying stuff, quite literally. Uh, it became almost like a trademark of Villia in this red copper appearance, in as much that it's got its own name, Ramata. This one here is about 80 years old and it's, well, stood a fairly good test of time, but over here, we've got a modern remake of that finish. And I'm sure you'll agree, it looks beautiful. Sadly, the use of bicycles took a really big decline in Italy during the 1950s. And in 1958, the doors actually closed due to this here. Yeah, motorcycles and scooters, they took favor in terms of transportation over a bike. And it's quite ironic, really. They've got one parked up next to one of their delivery vans or something like that. But 11 years later, 1969, the Gasteldello brothers, they bought the name and they re-entered the market. And since then, they've had loads of big achievements. Think Cunego, think uh, Alessandro Balan, Marco Pantani, Scarponi, Alessandro Pataki, Sylvain Chavanel, need I go on? Now we're at the modern day. Now this modern day includes the new Zero SLR that Ollie took a first look at a few months ago, and also this, the Cento 10 High, an e-bike, believe it or not, that actually just won an award at the Eurobike show for design and innovation. Pretty well hidden there, the cables, and also integration was one of the key things that the jury noted on. Now, it is an e-bike, like I've just said, but they've marketed it as a hybrid bike because they believe it's actually two bikes in one. Because once you take out these wheels and you replace them with some standard wheels, remember, this one's got a hub-based motor, you're gonna have a normal bike, let's face it. And also quite an impressively light one, just over seven kilos, because this bike, with the motor in and also the battery, is just 10.2 kilos. That's pretty impressive. Now, if you're anything like me, you're probably wondering, how does a bike go from concept to the consumer? Well, let's go and find out. It's a, a big team of people involved. Everybody put his own ideas. And then finally we said, okay, that's the target. It must be light, it must be aero. You know, it depends the model you're looking for. And then, yes, start the, 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 big, the big story. 
The first thing is uh, about uh, the sizes, you know, what we are talking about. It's a racing machine. Okay, let's start to fix what must be the length of the frame, uh, the, the, the angles, whatever. If it's endurance, of course, it will be longer or shorter. It, you know, first of all, we set about, and then we start to talk about the shape. If it's aero, we start to talk about uh, the NACA profile. Uh, we normally we use truncated uh, NACA profile. So we have a small uh, wind tunnel where we test some profile. It's, it's a process, step by step, we try to find for every single tubing, every single detail, the right design. There are some tests that must be uh, made to get the EN standard, to follow the, the EN standard. But of course, uh, we are a little bit more strict, so we, are, we make a longer or heavier uh, test than EN standard to be 100% safe. The teams uh, is very important. Uh, they push us to get, uh, they want everything super light, super stiff, super everything. Uh, I remember uh, years ago, uh, really uh, push us to get a new TT and we comes out with a twin blade. It was something really special for, for that year. So with a fork with two, two blades. And then also, for example, also the new Zero SLR. Yes, the input of the team was, uh, okay, this is something that is coming, but today is too heavy. So, yeah, let's make a light 6.8 disc. And that's, that's, uh, that's what's come, the new, the new Zero SLR effect. So, okay, now we work on the, we, we just work on the super light. The future is something different than, than super light, of course. Villiers frames are all made in the Far East, with the exception of one, the Super Leggera, which is a steel bike and is still made here in Bassano del Grappa, and that even comes in that Ramata-style paintwork if it tickles your fancy. A couple of reasons then why the frames are made out there in the Far East. Firstly, manufacturing experience. They've been doing it for a very long time now. And secondly, new manufacturing processes. They tend to be discovered in the Far East quicker than anywhere else in the world, which can only be be good news for a bike geek like me, I reckon. Uh, now, once these frames arrive back here to Villa HQ, there's a service which is offered called Infinitamente, or something like that anyway, and it's a custom coloured process uh, which allows you to customise your bike online to your exact requirements. Now, if you're like me, you could probably waste hours designing your ideal bike, or you could go one step further and have that Romata style paintwork, or also Chromavalato. Now, the folks here at Villa, they've heard I'm pretty good when it comes to painting bikes, and they wanted to show me how they did theirs. So, uh, let's go and have a look. So the painting isn't actually done at the HQ because obviously you need some specialist equipment. And I said to them, do you know what? I quite fancy having a go at this today. For some reason, they didn't seem very keen. Can't think why. Right, so the first stage then of this journey, obviously it is a big production line here and I don't want to interrupt too much, but we first of all have the nude carbon frame and fork sent here, as well as the handlebars too, because they also spray those. Multi-stage process, let's have a look at the next stage, which is actually the preparation of the frame and fork. So when the frames are actually released from their molds, they're very often left with just a little bit of residue on them, which is perfectly normal. But in order for that paint to actually stick onto it, the frames need to be prepped really, really well. So behind me, there's a team who are sanding down frames, forks, handlebars. This is such a labor intensive intensive process, believe me. If you get this one step wrong, the rest of the steps are gonna be terrible because it just does not work. It's part of the ecosystem, if you like, of the actual painting process. So when they're sanding down the various different frames, they're actually using different grits of sandpaper. So they start off with quite a coarse one, I guess, and then end up with something very fine. The reason behind this, you want it to be super smooth, so there's no grooves, there's no ridges, nothing like that. So the next stage of the process is much easier. That next stage is priming the frame. 
So sadly, I missed them getting primed, but here they are. But then, just over my shoulder, I've got some chrome-style forks. Now, these chrome forks that are in there, they're not actual chrome. Instead, it's a chrome of alato style finish. So that means, basically, it's a silvery reflective style paint on top of the carbon. The frames are also done in it too. Now, the reason they've done this is because the top coat of paint, which is called Admiral Blue, is quite translucent and it allows that silver to really pop through. Something which I have picked up on though is when they're mixing the paint and putting it into the actual paint gun itself, they use some filter paper, so similar to what we would use when you're making a coffee or something like that, which means that there's no lumps or bumps coming through into the canister, which allows a nice even flow. Now obviously we're not going to sit here and watch the frames dry because that's literally like watching paint dry. Instead, we're going to go to the next stage which is applying the decals or decals, depending on where you come from. Right, I've got a big sheet here of different decals. Each bike, of course, does have its own model name, so you need to make sure you put the right ones on the right bike because they are painting all sorts of different models here. Now, it is labour intensive again because everything is done by hand. I don't think I'd be very good at this because it involves a huge amount of precision with lining things up because remember it is for a consumer at the end of the day. Uh, once that's done though, we go back into the spray booth for another part of painting. And this is the lacquering process. So by this, it means that we're going to have a nice clear coat on top of the frame so you can see that paintwork and it's going to be protected too from any stones that may well flick up off the road. And importantly, seal in those decals that have been painstakingly applied by hand. Once the lacquer is on, well, just to speed up the drying process, it's moved into this sort of giant, very low heat oven just to bake it in place. Right then, we've got a primed frame, we've got a painted frame, we've got a deckled frame, we've got a lacquered frame. It's nice and dry, it's ready to go. No, it's not. Oh, no, no, no. The next stage is actually the polishing. So check this out here. We've got a little buffing wheel controlled by air, always good. A little bit of polishing compound would go on here and then gently go over the frame to remove any tiny little imperfections before the final bit where it goes in that box, down the road, and well, it gets built up. Let's go and take a look at that. We're back then with the frame, deckled, painted, lacquered, all of that. What happens next though? Well, if you've ordered just a frame set, that's gonna get boxed up, sent out to the dealer, and you can assemble and build that yourself. But if you've ordered one of those hybrid bikes, so an e-bike or a mid to high-end road bike, that's where these lot come in handy. So we've got two teams of mechanics here. Firstly, we've got a guy who's normally here, he's just having a quick break, who is assembling wheels all day, every day. So he's putting on rim tapes, inner tubes, tires, cassettes, reflectors, you name it, he's dealing with that. And then he's seating them on with this quite a fancy machine there. Then there's eight mechanics up here who are working on these workstations, which are pretty cool. I've never seen anything like this. I've not been to very many factories, but they're essentially on rails or a track. So when they've finished one job, they can wheel it around or scoot it around to their colleague who can finish off and do that next step in the journey. And with bikes being more and more complex, I guess you could say, with internal routing and everything, having it put together by someone who does it all day, every day, is way easier than trying to do it yourself, at least for me. Now, it's not quite as straightforward as just assembling bikes all day, every day. Other things have to be considered too, such as brakes. Yeah, something as simple as that. In the UK, we don't have our brakes like they have in Italy, for instance. And with a big international market, these things really have to be considered. Now, once the bikes have been test ridden by the mechanics and then passed over to this pair behind me, who then take them apart very slightly and wrap them up securely before putting them into a cardboard box. It's really well built, believe me. You see a lot of people traveling through airports with these. And the rest really is left with the dealer, I guess, where they put on some handlebar tape, put the wheels in, turn the bars, and then you're ready to ride. There we go, we're nearly at the end because now we're in goods out. The bike is about to begin its journey off to that dealer so one happy cyclist can go and collect their new bicycle. Let me know what you thought about this video down there in the comments section below. Personally, when I was invited out here, I didn't know what to expect. I thought I was gonna find a fairly small warehouse or factory, something like that. Instead, I've been greeted with a really state-of-the-art facility 
but with loads of old memorabilia hanging about. And well, I've been getting these grubby little hands all over it. Let me know down there in the comments section what your favorite bit has been though. And also remember to check out the GCN shop at shop.globalcyclingnetwork.com. We've got a whole heap of goods for you to check out. And now for two more great videos, how about clicking just over here and just over here. And me, I'm gonna go and do my hair in that chroma volato paintwork.